take emotion out of investing. Okay, with me here is the other half of Altcoin Daily, of course, co-host uh, Austin, Austin Arnold. Please, maybe you can tell our audience a bit about yourself, a little introduction. Please enlighten us. Absolutely. Uh, Austin, co-founder and host of Altcoin Daily, over a million subscribers on YouTube, another million on Twitter. Um, started the channel in 2018 in the depths of the bear market and have grown a large audience that follow us as we talk about how this space is growing. They really are at the top of the crypto media game. So, Bigots, you know, we're very, very excited to be able to invite them on have a chance to go on panels, chat about your thoughts of the whole industry. And uh, with, with that, we wanted to hear your thoughts. What do you think will be the, the biggest trend in crypto in the next five years? Ooh, good question. Um, number one, let, let me give you two answers. Number one, I think in a big, big way, it's gonna be Bitcoin or a solution to the devaluation of fiat money. For example, the U.S. has a presidential election coming up in 2024. It's already a talking point, a policy issue for uh, presidents that are forced to speak about. Why is inflation so high? Is there a solution to any of this? Um, and, and Bitcoin is the most decentralized, most censor censorship resistant with a capped supply solution. So I think Bitcoin um, is going to be a huge trend. And then if I had to pick one more... I guess I would say, I mean, I'm a big gaming guy. I think it, it's super easy for um, gamers who will already deal with virtual money to understand how having true ownership maybe in that virtual money or the virtual economy is a benefit to them. Now, it, it's been a pain point the last year and a half since 2021. A lot of gamers rejected play to earn, um, but just because what people forgot is the game has, has to be fun. You know, it has to be built into the system. Um, almost so the gamer doesn't even realize it. That's the best solution. So I think gaming and then Bitcoin, two major trends. I love that actually, because you don't normally hear people say Bitcoin. A lot of people say AI, L2s, you know, more innovative stuff. But I like that you're going back to the basics because Bitcoin is the, the pristine store of value, the collateral asset that you really want to hold long-term. I really buy into the Michael Saylor ideology as well so 100 it's amazing that you're, you're all about that and by the way having next year in 2024 if crypto has nothing else it's that bitcoin having that halves the supply faucet and in a way it, it, it's its own marketing um because all the news all the media starts talking about it what will it happen will it affect price will it be a sell-off do people still care so it's its own little event on its own which provides its own marketing Love it. Heard it here first. Definitely get yourself some Bitcoin. All right. So moving along, I wanted to to pick your brain maybe on a more personal note. What has been the biggest lesson you've learned in your crypto journey so far? Ooh, asking the tough ones. Um, I think it would probably be always take the time to, you know, they say measure twice, cut once. I believe in like learn twice make an action once, meaning you'll never regret learning more, not FOMOing in right away, um, taking the time to actually understand um, you know, why you're investing in something or what the value proposition is versus just saying, oh, it's a, it's a decentralized, um, decentralized way to watch movies or something like that. There's a lot of hype out there. I think you'll never regret actually learning twice about something and then making slow calculated moves, having a plan rather than rushing into something. That's a great, great tip. Definitely remember to do that. Always take your time, do your own research. That is, I think, the basics, but a lot of people rush into things. So I think that is a fantastic tip. All right, Austin. So my next question for you would be, um, what has been the one thing you're most proud of in your crypto journey so far? I think the thing I'm most proud of is one, like the audience that my brother and I have built, but that really tailors into the relationships that my brother and I have made just because crypto is so online in general. You're in your room, just on your computer, very siloed off, except for those forums. I think it's always really cool to meet like-minded individuals of the space 
that share the same mindset, that want a more decentralized future. We don't want to be um, under the control of big tech. We want to own our own data. We want control, better control of our purchasing power, unlike the US dollar. Um, so I think that the, the relationships that we've cultivated and the audience we've grown is just a huge signal to the mainstream world that crypto is not going away. Crypto is only getting bigger and the revolution hasn't even begun yet. It's barely begun. We're in the first inning. Absolutely right. I can't wait for that. I know we are still early. A lot of people say maybe not so much, but I really still believe we are still many, many decades away before the whole world really takes it seriously. So we are definitely at the forefront. Okay, my next question is, if you had just one advice for, let's say, a beginner, investor or trader, mm. if there was one thing that they should take away um, that could be really beneficial for them for the next two years, maybe preparing for the next cycle, what would that be? Take emotion out of investing meaning that it is very easy to get caught up in hype like coinbase is ipoing back at the top of the market in 2021 or ftx is crashing the market is tanking and just because that emotion is out there does not mean the the underlying value of the protocol they are investing in changes i mean that's an opportunity if F, if the market is going to hell i mean it, and again i i fall prey to this sometimes too sometimes it's easy for me to to let emotion take over and um, force me to make moves that, again, it's not part of my original investor's thesis plan, meaning does the value of the Ethereum network, has that changed at all? No, a centralized organization went down hard. They were lying to the people, individuals were lying to the public, but the value of the network is only getting fundamentally stronger. So again, that would be an opportunity. Um, so whenever you can, and, and the new investors, I think fall prey to this the most, they invest emotionally rather than with their plan. I say flip it. I love that a little reverse psychology there. That's right. Stay disciplined. Don't get triggered by what the mass is saying. Just you know, look forward and and stay disciplined. And again, take the emotions out. I love that. Okay, what would you like to say to Bicket on their fifth year anniversary? Ooh, happy birthday! Five years. That's big. Huge. Um. No, but honestly, I think that's something that I like about BitGet. It's five years, so they've been around. They're one of like the OGs in the space. If you've been around five years, that's huge. Um, the thing I like, though, that the building and the growing has been like slow and steady and built off themselves year to year, rather than some exchanges. You know, they're here for one cycle, they're gone the next. Something I really like, especially also about this conference, is um, very, very. They have the individual in mind. So like we're partners with BitGet, we worked with them a lot. Um, I love how, again, it, whether it's their customer service or their exchange or even just this conference, it's very individual focused, which me as the average retail investor, that's all I care about, so. Indeed, love that. All right, uh, let's do a little fireside question. Okay, what is the biggest crypto trend in the next five years? I think the number one trend that's going to affect the whole market is, is there a solution for my fiat, my government money, being devalued? There has been no other point in history, uh, especially the digital history, which is a lot shorter, um, where individuals had a choice to opt out of a currency that their government issued. Now, if that government's going to act incredibly irresponsible, why should why should individuals have to suffer for that? For the first time ever, we have an opportunity to opt out. So I think, again, as, as fiat keeps getting devalued, Bitcoin can only get an increase in value if there's a demand there. So I think Bitcoin's gonna be a huge trend. And then um, online gamers, they're using virtual currency anyway. It's such an easy transition to have ownership of those digital assets. Um, and they're already using you know, in-game wallets that aren't on the blockchain. Um, I, I think that gamers are gonna usher in you know those next 100 million, if not billion people into crypto. Wow, that's gonna be very exciting. All right. My next one is, uh, what is your favorite thing about BitGet? Yeah, uh, the thing I like about BitGet is, again, for me, I'm an average retail investor. All I care about is, does the product work? Can I trust the product, you know, relatively speaking, as, as much as you can? Um, and, you know, 
are they consumer focused? Is, is it easy for me to use? And that's one of the reasons, you know, we love working with BitGet. We're partnered with BitGet just because, again, it's so, there's the hype, like with a lot of other businesses, it's not so much focused on, it's more of the, the stake, the substance um, of actually, you know, being user first, user centric and making it super easy um, for an average person to just interact with crypto. Great answer. All right. My next one for you, and the reason why we asked this is because, you know, we wanted to show our audience, even the most successful people gone through successes and failures, hardships. Mm -hmm. So my next question is, what token did you lose or earn the most money on? What did I lose or earn? That's a good question. <laughs> the thing is, even though I, I invest in crypto, I'm a very risk averse investor. So whether that you call that money management or portfolio management, like for me personally, the vast majority of my cryptocurrency portfolio has always been primarily Bitcoin and Ethereum. I mean, oh, depending on a bull or bear market, over definitely over 60, probably over 70%. And then maybe the second biggest portion is L1s, just because a big differentiator between the internet revolution and the cryptocurrency revolution is back in the late 90s, back in the two, uh, early 2000s, you couldn't invest in the underlying protocols. All the value, like Amazon, you know, all the value accrued to the very top. Unlike crypto, you can invest in the underlying protocols. So for me, what that means, no matter what aspect of DeFi makes it, no matter which protocol in gaming or NFTs make it, the value is accruing on those underlying chains. Um, so I guess the next part of my portfolio would be a basket of L1s. Because again, I, I don't know specifically, I have my guesses, but you know, invest in the basket um, that I think are clearly have the best fundamentals. And then also L2s, huge narrative um, this next cycle. So point is to answer that question, CH, uh, you know, ten then I then the last ten percent, five percent of my portfolio would be the gambling. The, maybe I'll degen on this random meme coin, go into the depths of Uniswap, decentralized exchange, and you know, I'm willing to lose it. Um, but that's half the for me, half the fun of crypto, trying to find those little lottery tickets in gems, but understanding the huge risk comes along with that. So I guess what would be my biggest win or biggest loss? My biggest win, I mean, it would probably be Ethereum. And it's not, again, in a more conservative, conservative mindset, I, I've had definitely successes in a random meme, cashed out, you know, always take profits. But in terms of, you know, where I, where I put the most of my money versus what has the best upside between Bitcoin versus ETH, huge Ethereum bull, right. and then risk, Man, I mean, I guess maybe a random meme coin when the when the meme coin you know you know thing was going on for like a couple of weeks. I did try and figure this out. I invested in a bunch of memes. I I could name them, but I <laughs> would rather not. But again, that was that was truly less than five. I mean, less than is not a lot of money, and um, those only went down. All good, man. Hey, risk and reward, right? That's you right. Have your allocation, so that's all good. All yeah. Right. How about you, CH? How about me? Ooh, yeah. that's that's a good one. Well, I mean, you know, I've I've definitely done my fair share of different investing in different coins. Uh, of course, I have my blue chips, but yeah, I've done some micro cap coins where I thought maybe there was a good team behind them, but a lot of times the market just dumps and you just never know what happens, right? The narrative mm -hmm. is good, but again, with these micro cap smaller coins, high risk, high reward. And what's been your biggest win? Um, my biggest win in the past was actually another alt layer one, and I had a, I was working with them for a little for a long time, so I was there from the very beginning. So that was my big win because I was able to get in super early. Oh, so that was that was my biggest win. Can you name it, or you'd rather not? I'd rather. I think maybe we can we can skip on that little part. Okay. But um, I think, you know, of course, the bear market that project also has tanked quite substantially. So everything's in ups and downs, but. I think if you have a long-term horizon, if you look out 5, 10, 20 years from now, that's, I think, where the real wealth can be generated. 100%. Right. So that's my outlook. That's my mindset. And it looks like you're the same way if you're just holding Bitcoin and ETH as your majority uh, stake. 100%. Love it. Okay, so a quick, uh, quick choice to HODL for two years. What would you pick, Bitcoin or ETH? Hmm. I would say if I was feeling more risk-averse, I would pick Bitcoin if I was more 
uh, reward-centric, I would pick Ethereum. For me, if you're picking between Bitcoin and Ethereum, um, I think it's smarter to hold Ethereum in the bull markets. It's smarter to hold Bitcoin in the bear markets. So if I think it's going to be a, a bullish market the next two years, which I actually do, because the Bitcoin halving is coming up, um, that's a huge su supply shock on the, the most valuable cryptocurrency. So I would have to choose Ethereum um, because in a bull market, I think it will outperform Bitcoin. Sure, sure, absolutely. Okay, then the next one is NFTs or meme coins? NFTs. NFTs, okay, good. What man. do you think, I'm a degen gambler and I'm gonna- Not at all. I... Meme coins have no value <laughs> other than community. And you know, the, the things that change that is if Elon integrates Dogecoin into Twitter, then, then that is huge utility for Dogecoin a meme coin, um, but again, it's highly dependent, highly centralized on one man that controls a huge platform. But if I had to pick between meme coins and NFTs, then NFTs have, I think, much better fundamental utility, whether it's used for um, digital identification, um, verification of luxury items like watches, even house deeds, stuff like that, NFTs, the technology can be used and aren't as degen community centric as a meme coin. I love that answer. Okay, well the next one follows up with what you just said, Dogecoin or Sheeb? I mean, could I pick, I'd, I'd go Doge. Doge, okay, because of the man himself. Because of the man himself, if you have Elon, then that's a huge uh, value add that none of those other meme coins tend to have. A lot of those other meme coins, including Shib, have an anonymous team, um, maybe just as strong communities, but again, as a more risk averse investor, if I had to pick, give me Doge. I love that. Austin, thank you so much. Yes. It's been an absolute pleasure. A new friend has been made. He's uh, an amazing content creator, of course, at the top of the game. And we're really excited to have him. And as always, really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely, CH. Thank That's you. from us.